Hello everyone and welcome to another video from BunMed where we discuss concise medical knowledge you can fit inside of a bun. Today we will be talking through part one of a four part series on the interpretation of ECGs. In this video we will go through a brief overview and introduction. So first of all it's important to understand what an ECG actually tells us. Um, so the heart is an organ that is uh, that has a plumbing system, so in other words the vessels, um, the arteries and the veins, and it also has an electrical aspect to it which is the conductive pathway and helps the heart to, to effectively beat at a constant rate. So if something goes wrong with the electrical pathway um, we can detect this using an ECG. The second thing that we can look for is how the heart is functioning and is it normal structurally? So if the heart is too thick or too thin in specific areas, then again the ECG will be able to tell us this. The final thing and perhaps the most important is, is the heart muscle healthy? So if someone has a heart attack or in other words a myocardial infarction, what that means is that some of the heart muscle will um, be deprived of oxygen or may even die and as a result we can detect this using an ECG quite quickly and treat it um, before further damage happens. So before we actually read an ECG it's important to confirm a couple of details. The first one is of course the patient's details, so have we got the right patient and the right ECG. The other thing that's important is when it was taken. So if a patient is presenting with chest pain now but the ECG was taken two days ago then it's unlikely to be helpful. The second thing is to confirm the calibration and the speed of the paper, which I'll go in through in a minute, and then finally go through the um, ECG itself. So just a quick recap of the um, normal ECG. So first of all, there's the P wave, the QRS complex, and then the T wave. So the P wave signifies atrial depolarization. So in other words, that the electrical current that we mentioned previously, uh, that I mentioned previously, um, is going through the atria, and so this is signified by a small spike called the P wave. And then the same electrical current going through the ventricles is known as the QRS complex, and this identifies ventricular depolarization. You can see that the spike is a lot bigger than the um, P wave and this is because the ventricles are bigger and thicker. And then, as you may recall from A-levels or, or school, um, anything that depolarizes also needs to repolarize. And so repolarization is, um, is highlighted by the T-wave, so this specifically shows you the ventricles uh, repolarizing. Um, as as it comes to the atria repolarizing, this is actually another spike, but it's hidden underneath the QRS complex, and so that's why you can't see it, but it is there. So previously I mentioned about calibration. So an ECG is effectively something important, not only to look at how fast the heart is going, but also the structural component, as I mentioned previously. So, um, in order to identify the calibration, you need to look at this small square looking um, thing here. And this should ID effectively be um, 10 squares high, no more and no less. And the reason it's important is because um, whatever the calibration of the ECG is will tell you how um, high or how low the rest of the ECG will look. So you can see where it's been over calibrated, the QRS complexes look huge and this is a problem because this patient might be completely healthy but according to this ECG if we didn't look at the calibration they m would have a diseased heart um, and this would suggest that the um, areas of their heart is actually thicker than it should be when actually it's not. Um, just on the same page, under calibration is also a problem. So this patient could actually have a diseased heart and could have a thick heart muscle which would be abnormal, but because the paper has been under calibrated, this actually looks like it's normal. Um, so you probably wouldn't be expected to 
um, explain if a ECG is over or under calibrated, but it's important just to mention that the, um, the ECG is normally calibrated. The second thing that's important to look at is the printing speed of the ECG. So um, the normal printing speed is 25 millimeters a second, and it will usually say this on the bottom of the ECG paper. So if the ECG printing speed is too slow, in other words, 12 and a half millimeters a second, then the ECG itself will actually look fast. So what this means is that the patient will appear to have a fast heart rate when actually it's normal. Um, on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the printing speed being too fast. So um, in this case, it looks like the patient has a really slow heart rate um, when actually it's completely fine. So thank you very much for watching the video. We hope you found it helpful. Please do look out for the rest of the ECG series on our YouTube channel. And if you found it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments and we'll get back to you when we can. Thank you.